Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I just wanted to bring up a subject that I haven't brought up before. Uh, by the way, this is the XTS 2500, uh, 1500, 2500 tool, and my cat is just about ready to enter the picture. But anyway, uh, I suggest that you get the OEM Motorola tool. 1500, 2500. Uh, this will take the knobs off on a 2500 and this end is for the chassis. Uh, they do make a cheap uh, Hong Kong knockoff. Don't get it. Go with this. It's a lot, it's a lot more exact. Anyway, uh, one thing I did want to mention is there's uh, issues sometimes with 2500s or I mean 5000s uh, with the clock. Now the clock is run by, and I'm just gonna say C CMOS battery. Uh, at times you can take the battery off of the unit. When you take the battery off of the unit and put it back on, in this case it's not, nothing's gonna happen. The clock's gonna still show the correct time. But a lot of times there are units, especially if they're older, they won't, uh, that clock will disappear and you'll have to go back into clock and you have to reset it. So if that is the case, there is a thing that you can do. And the batteries you can pick up from Motorola. The uh, item number here is six zero seven one five two zero m o one these are direct from Motorola and uh they're three volt and they're lithium ion and they're rechargeable so they will actually charge while the unit is charging and what you need to do is we're gonna get in I'll show you how to get in uh First, you take off all the important parts here. Battery antenna, and if you've got an external audio adapter, remove that. Do not even attempt to work on a radio unless you've got the correct Moto tool. You know, it's not, it's not a good idea in any way, shape, or form. But anyway, okay. You simply remove the flux like this and you've got the 5000. The 5000, <coughs> a good thing about a 5000 is you can work on it. 2500s not so much. 2500s have uh, brittle flexes. They're difficult to, they're difficult to uh, rehouse. There's a tab here that you lift off and there's a tab here for the keypad. You disengage these two, you need to watch this when you line this back up. You've got your LCD, <clears throat> you've got your four tabs here on the keypad. I'm going to go ahead and release those. And I'll show you where this battery is located. Ah, wrong tool, wrong end. Make sure you have the right tool for the job. Okay. Takes a second here. When you're taking these off, when you this is exactly made it to the groove right here. Invariably this thing's gonna come off. Yep, there it goes, it rolls off. I'm gonna just go ahead and remove it. It's the O-ring. Make sure that you position it. That's the bottom, that's the top. Still it's gonna be hard to get back on. You can press down a little bit and you can get a little bit of motion on this. So, okay. Now, 
This is unseated. And you simply lift the whole assembly up and watch out for that gold gold piece. You pull this back. Okay. Set this down. You can now remove your LCD. You can now remove your keypad. Okay. Once you've done that, on the back of this board is where the battery is. Let's see if I can't turn this around for you. The encryption module actually, well, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, let's see if I can't get a good angle on this. I had one. That's the battery. So, you just simply slip it off or slip it out. I'm not going to do that. And you insert the Motorola coin battery in. Once you do that, it just slips out. Once you do that, your clock will not have an issue of disappearing on you. This is where you keep the encryption. Encryption plugs in the bottom. This is the bottom. Right here. The tray. This is where the encryption sits. Usually when you pull up a 5000 the encryption will be plugged in. Simply unplug it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. When you reassemble it, you do it just the exact same way. You be very careful, right? At this point, make sure you line this up correctly. Okay. Now, I'll try to do this in frame, but if I can't get it in frame, I'm more concerned about being accurate. There we go. Keypad's locked on. Now, you can go ahead and very, very carefully seat the flex into place. Okay, now you've got your LCD. Be very, very careful with this. You've got two posts right here. It slides onto the two posts that are right on here. Unlike a 3000, you don't have a rubber tit that you have to line up into the bottom of this. 5000s are just made so much better. But still, you have to be very, very careful. Don't get any fingerprints on the screen, by the way. You'll be wiping your screen from the outside for, for days. Simply line this up. Press down. Now everything's engaged. Now is a good time to go around the outside. You know, clean up anything that you've got. If you need to take your keypad out, you can. Uh, make sure that you seat the keypad properly. Clean the keypad on the inside. It looks fine. Although, better safe than sorry. Okay. Your flex. You've got your speaker, your flex, and your membrane for the keypad, and you've got your flex controls up here. But anyway, simply engage the flex, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this around, and I'm going to have to do this off camera, probably, unless I can do it, maybe get it up closer. These always want to roll. They're very difficult to get on. 
this is the most crucial stage of reassembly. Well, one of them. Make sure nothing pinches. Because if it pinches, it's not good and it's not a good seal. All right. Now, you go along the back, or sides, bottom, everything's lined up. Take your tool, you make sure that when you close this down, everything's going to be seated properly. And sure enough, this O-ring's wanting to be a pain in the ass. Give me a second. If I gotta do it off camera, I gotta do it off camera. The main thing is to get it right. Ah, that O-ring. Okay. Slide it in a little deeper. Going with the tool. Work it in, work it in. Make sure there's no visible sign of the O ring. Invert your tool. Damn it. Invert your tool. That takes pressure off the bottom. Slide it in like this and simply close it. See that way you've got a protective shield right there. Pops in every time. Perfect. All the way around. So, simply check everything along the sides. Everything looks fine. Reattach your battery. Reattach your antenna. I am going to get some public safety mics in. Uh, they're going to be the type that go that take an RF adapter. They're going to be brand new. I've got eight of them coming in. If you need them, I got them. Turn your radio on and your clock will never have problems like that again. But, like I said, I've never seen anybody actually mention anything about this, but you can order these from Motorola. I got these from Jeff at Sandy Communications. And it's very, very good. Again, the item number for these batteries is 6071520M01. And it is a battery coin, 3 volt lithium ion rechargeable. Take it easy, guys. If you need those public safety mics for the 5000s, uh, I'm not sure if they'll do the 2500s. I need to check the specs. But anyway, uh, that's how you go about changing that battery. Uh, again, a tool like this for the 2500s and the 1500s is invaluable. I highly suggest you get one. And the Moto tool, don't try to disassemble a radio without it. Take it easy, guys. That's a CMOS battery uh, removal uh, change and location demo for you. So. Take it easy, guys. Later on.